okay so let's uh, get on with this so today i would like uh, to tell you about you know editing what we see in youtube how we uh, see tutorials and this and that the problem with most of those tutorials is they either tell you how to do um, say instagram reels or youtube videos or they work on few demo clips from say new camera that just launched or or you know like any sort of some demo things that don't give us the full picture of how you should get along with editing in a big project say even if it's a, just a five minute five minute music video you can not um, imagine the kind of work one has to put in to just uh, make a five minute uh, video of music uh, it has so many components so many factors forget about the just storytelling or something like that just you know like there has to be a male actor and a female actor and the, then there are some b-rolls there are some traveling shots and drone shots okay so all those things have to be approached separately the, all those things have to be approached differently so right now in this tutorial we are not going to get very deep into how to approach uh, things on a project to project basis say you approach a web series differently and you approach a, a music video differently a documentary differently yes you do but uh, right now what we are going to do is you know like getting efficient at whatever editing software that we have chosen uh, here we will be discussing only two editing software that are available and most common on Windows platform but if you are a Mac user and say you are a Final Cut user then uh, that applies to that as well the only thing is you have to translate this concept into your choice of editing software so between Premiere and Resolve so I started my journey with Premiere okay the Premiere was the first editing software that I actually uh, got my hands on it was quite difficult for me to understand at first but then I bought some books and then saw some tutorials and that you know like eased up whole the, the whole process and then I got into resolve so why premiere and resolve only first premiere is very popular simple as that why is it popular is it popular because most of us are accustomed or most of us made an entry to Adobe's suite with some other software, say Photoshop. Okay, suddenly uh, or after effect, suddenly you want to uh, animate or put a video out, you come to Premiere. Resolve is a very different industry software that comes from a very different corner. It started its journey from topmost studios. If you go seven years back, Resolve used to cost around somewhere around ninety thousand to few hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars. And they were studios and editing suites specific only. But now, Resolve is worth three hundred some three hundred twenty five dollars only. Why? Because of the penetration in the industry. And Resolve has some very good tools that if you use it you, you would know that it is not being copied from anywhere it's, it's a very original software the whole interface is very original it feels really nice and has a lot of uh, features that are very useful okay so I will uh, present to you um, uh, this whole presentation in a PPT format and as we go through the slides I will tell you what is what and um, we'll discuss every slide accordingly okay so here I will just uh, switch to my screen here. Yeah, so this is uh, the heading. So as you can see, becoming efficient is a lot of things. Becoming efficient means you know, you understand your project. You understand its demand. You understand how to manage time. You understand how to manage storage and you understand how to manage uh, production input and client input. There are different demands. 
demands of the creative team demands of the client who has no knowledge of creative approach but has a good grasp of what audience might know so it is your job in the end of the day to make something that is consumable and enjoyable for the audience and after all they are the final critic okay so before we start i'd like to give you a small bite of something that is you know like coming out of an hollywood okay it is a nomenclature uh, um, what you can say is a unit of how we uh, calculate time length in films okay so here a shot what is a shot a shot is a super solid image what do you mean by that say a shot is something that is taken after action has been said and before the cut has been said so between action and cut whatever is recorded and after trimming the unnecessary parts and taking out the good acting patch what you have with you in your timeline that is a shot one shot one small piece of act hence a super solid image a moment what is a moment a bike driving by the street coming to a halt and the rider gets off the bike takes his helmet off that is a moment okay and so there might be 2 3 4 5 cuts in that so those cuts are shots you combine them from bike entering the scene to a rider uh, deboarding the bike and then taking the helmet off that's a moment scene let's say a car chase okay the car chase started okay this that happened it reached its finale and after reaching its finale there is some sort of uh, you know like climax or something like that and there is end with a consequence that's a whole scene okay that's a scene that's like car chase scene fight scene something like that so the word itself scene now then comes a sequence what's a sequence a memorable group of scenes so sequence is something that has you know like a mini story in it say for example what is the difference between fight scene and an action sequence okay fight scene is say between two people fighting together fist fight boxing whatever street brawl okay two people started fighting one came out victorious the fight ended that's the whole scene end of the story sequence would be what was the catalyst for that fight what instigated the fight where did they go and fight and the fight itself what happened after the fight and did the fight resolved the problem that created the fight itself that's a sequence reel okay here it is said he says 20 minutes of awesome sequence um 20 minutes is just an um just a uh, metaphor here so if your reel has to be say 30 minutes reel has to be 1 hour it's fine because see if you're working on a long long form narrative or a long form fiction uh your entire one film one episode one uh, unit of documentary might be 2 hours long in that case your reel could be 1 hour long or you are working on a short and your reel could be 10 minutes long so reel is something that you do that you put two three sequence together next to each other and you see a story coming so short you had a meaning it's a one act moment it's a sequence of acts scene is the whole picture of that uh, moment what happened like the fight scene sequence what caused the fight scene what happened after this fight scene but the reel really does not need to have a meaning like that essentially reel could be just 
a random patch of time that you realized works fine with you in terms of editing this particular project nothing else so you're working on a 3 hour long movie you just you just divided the whole frame into two reels or maybe 10 reels whatever works for you and then then why reel because reel is something as you work on you can put the reel aside group it nest it compound clip it or whatever your editing software provides and you can just save it safely that now say you do some kind of a ripple edit whatever happens you know for sure that if you messed up your reel 3 on a timeline where you did some ripple edit and you did not use correct line patching and all that uh, sequencing of uh, video tracks you are not going to mess this up because it's logged done deal that's it and finally when you put lot of reels together you make you get a film and like it is written here blood sweat tears of everyone included it is literally if you get a chance and you eventually come to this industry as a full-time employee no matter where you work in the production in the pre-production in the post-production whatever you will know in your very first project that filmmaking film in itself requires sacrifice and dedication that is quite a something that only a practitioner can know feel and appreciate people who goes to the film watch it in theater come out later two hours later sitting comfortably in the reclining chairs eating popcorns and cooling no the film was okay there are people who who went to such an extent just to get this film completed that they cannot possibly fathom trust me on this so we will go ahead uh, with the next slide and the next slide is we start with the efficiency part so efficiency uh, in this the first and fundamental thing would be organization now you might say organization that is pretty broad and that is pretty uh, you know like open-ended so yeah but organization in itself the word it is what it is so you have to start right from the dumping your footage in an order that is either logical to you or has been established by the project manager or your firm or whatever but there has to be a method to the madness okay because uh, when footage starts coming say in a web series 10 episode web series each episode 30 minutes long or a two hour uh, uh, feature frame shot on um, anything like mov or at least 4k mov is all all that and if they are shot on uh, 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 cameras like sony fx6 fx9 red or ire or whatever then we are looking at somewhere around like 10 tbs 15 tbs of data so 15 tbs of data is a hell of a data to actually have an idea have a hold of where what thing is so for that what you can do is actually start with a, a solution that works for you say you want to segregate everything by date say you want to segregate everything by location say everything you want to segregate by characters okay so what i do generally is by day okay and inside the day there is card numbers because we got a switch lot of cards throughout the day as the shooting progresses okay so first the project then the days day one day two day three then the cards if you are shooting at multiple locations or if you have more than one teams who are shooting parallel in different locations then inside the day one card you can have location the name of the location say forest location city location okay office location something like that okay and inside the city location office location forest location you can have card one two three four or if you are shooting multiple cameras so day one cam one cam two 
कैम वन कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री कार्ड फोर कैम टू कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री कार्ड फोर और अगेन एज द सेकेंड पॉइंट सेज यू नीड टू हैव अ फोल्डर स्ट्रक्चर एट योर डिस्पोजल दैट इज नॉट ऑनली रोबस्ट बट ऑल्सो स्केलेबल नाउ प्रोजेक्ट डे लोकेशन फॉरेस्ट एंड सिटी इन साइड फॉरेस्ट कैम वन कैम टू इन साइड कैम वन कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री कैम टू कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री लोकेशन टू दैट इज सिटी कैम वन कैम टू कैम वन कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री कैम टू कार्ड वन कार्ड टू कार्ड थ्री इफ यू हैव अ ड्रोन और अ ट्रैकिंग शॉट और समथिंग समर इक्विपमेंट इट गोज एज अ डिफरेंट कैमरा ऑल टूगेदर so maybe you can you can for for general purposes of for later post production for vfx or color grading whatever you can name that camera rather than just cam1 cam2 cam1 red say red scarlet that is your cam1 cam2 sony a7s3 third camera drone okay dji phantom or whatever now even if you don't have to go to the properties you know what camera it is so your folder structure needs to be extremely simple robust but at the same time has enough information and in our line in film industry we call it metadata enough metadata so that you can uniquely locate any single damn clip no matter where it is in what editing software what stage of post production we are talking about you know how to locate it without any discrepancy at all because if there are two takes one is good one is not good one is okay one is not okay and you switch them somehow while exporting while linking while anything giving some clean plates to vfx or whatever you are going to mess up big time because there might be some places where you will be you personally will be a uh, levied a fine a monetary fine for the cost to the company and cost to the production because for your error it took another 2 days another 3 days another whole week to get this thing done it's not easy people don't understand that what we are doing here as an editor but nonetheless we have to do it it is our job and why that's why we are paid for it so organization you need to have an organization if say dit or an online editor or whatever whenever you are getting a project if it is not organized as per your convention please take the time to prep the footage ask the the necessary people ask the people in authority or people who supervise the production for necessary metadata like okay which camera did we shoot on so you are a colorist you don't have any idea you just know that there were three cameras by looking at it you know there were two cameras and one drone go ahead don't be shy don't feel bad about it ask them what was the main camera what was the secondary camera what was the drone what's the model okay so that red was the uh, primary camera which color sense it was shot on oh it was shot on uh, red raw okay fine no problem uh the second one was sony okay what setting did the sony uh, operator use okay s log 3 gamma s gamma 3 cine fine now you put those informations in the file how how you put that information in the file we'll get that later but having those information makes things easier because as you progress in the um post production having a little crucial information changes everything say suddenly you want to segregate things segregate clips you have 2000 clips in your timeline you want to you, you see a problem with say mp4 clips okay why because you know that those mp4 clips were transcoded and the actual ones we are say mov mov prores 422 and suddenly you got a hard disk of the original prores 422 now you need to relink all those mp4 files to those actual prores files how you do you make a smart bin you make a smart bin smart bin with an extension with an with an parameter 
where it only filters files of H.264 codec. How do you know that? Because you prepped the footage. You went through its details, its file information and you know that okay although it's an mp4 it is h.264 because as i will tell you later in a different um, webinar that uh, mp4 can contain h.264 and h.265 uh, mov can contain h.264 or h.265 so selecting just mp4 would not do selecting just to h.264 would not do you need to have a, a condition for selecting these uh, footages that conditions intersects at only one point that is you only get the files that you want not like a bunch of files that are unnecessary coming up in the search field okay uh, so robust and scalable unique you don't need to link each and every single clip manually no let the software work for you you don't work for the software so when you are bulk relinking clips you need to have a unique folder structure so that computer knows exactly where it came from and it has no confusion of whether this clip is the thing or this clip is the thing no it is known that this is the clip only one you have a unique path as much as possible in next slide i will show you how a unique path looks like okay and then the organization skill does not end in the hard disk or in your computer as well like not in the storage device you need to have a proper bin structure in whatever NLE you are using okay the software also matters it, it is not enough that you just put all the organization skill in your hard disk but your editing program uh, the media storage place it's all mess no you have to have a storage and organization thing going on in your editing software as well it might be exactly like what is going on in the hard disk it works no problem but most of the time it doesn't need to be like that it doesn't what it needs to be is maybe based on episodes maybe based on characters uh, the antagonist and the protagonist or maybe the scenes okay so the requirement can be different so be, be open to change organization skills as per the requirement of the project there's no hard and fast rule it is just organization is an idea it's not a template let it sink it's an idea it's not a template okay next i'll show you a screenshot of a folder structure that i mostly follow okay yeah this so here as you can see we are inside a uh, external drive okay and inside that drive the drive itself is the whole project so there is no project name okay if someone is thinking that why the project name is missing so the whole drive is the project okay then there's day six and yes please write day 06 or 006 don't write day 6 because if you write 6 or 2 or 9 and you go to 10 then in windows the folder will organize as day 1 day 10 day 2 day 20 don't do that add enough digits so just to be safe i wrote 001 so i can go to 999 okay then card so this card 12 card 13 card 14 and sony this is the secondary camera it was first for that day so sony one and inside that card this is the real name okay real name is something that is extremely important if you are shooting on cinema cameras real name is something that can save your day when everything has gone south and this is especially very crucial when you are linking footage from this to that if somebody give you an xml after editing you are grading it someone give you an vfx xml whatever if you're changing hands changing software changing systems real name can save you a lot of hassle how why i'll show you i'll tell you later so inside the real name folder there are frames 
So now you might be thinking, what are all these? See, this project was shot on Cinema DNG. Cinema DNG is a file format that is image file sequence file format. As you can see, it's all said DNG, DNG, DNG. What is image file sequence? DNG, EXR, JPG 2000, these are file formats in which when exported or when recorded, um, EXR can be recorded, I guess, I'm not sure. JPG cannot be recorded, it can only be exported. Cinema DNG can only be recorded, not exported. Okay, so when in image file sequence file format, anything is recorded or exported, every frame, every single frame of that video, if 24 frames a second, we are talking about 24 frames in one second. So if we export two seconds of video, or if we record two seconds of video, we will get 48 frames in our folder structure. So this camera recorded 24 FPS. So I have thousands of frames for a recorded a few minutes as each single file in my folder structure. When I open this sequence of files, which are completely in order, start from 0000, 0000 then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 and 2 and 3 and it goes on. When I open it up in a compatible software, this does not look like a series of files. It compiles all of them together and play it real time as one single video file. This is the reason Cinema DNG is an extremely bad file format when it comes to editing. It takes a lot and lot of processing power to play it real time. Not to forget, this is a raw image. Every raw image is not an image. It's a bunch of zeros and one. It is only an image after it has been debared. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Debared is something that is an algorithm, mathematical algorithm that makes sense of that data and turn it into an image. In simpler words, think of it as a bunch of zeros and one has been uh, applied a mathematical formula. After applying that mathematical formula, you get a picture of a flower. So from a bunch of a dump of heap of zeros and one, you get a picture of a flower or a picture of something that you can visually see and understand. That translation is called debearing. We will learn about raw formats, debearing, optimization, in later later videos okay so this is how you need to set up your folder structure moving on color coding yeah color coding is something uh, that is taken care of inside your editing software this is a part of organization that is that is done inside your editing software say it is a premiere pro or uh, or Final Cut Pro, a Resolve, okay, and it is done in a very different logic. The purpose of color coding is very different from purpose of making different segregated folders in your hard disk. In your hard disk, the folder structure, its primary reason is to find any shot when someone asks you. Second, make sure your shot is not lost or confused with another shot in another folder from another day or another camera or whatever. Uniqueness is the motive of your organization in your hard disk. Color coding has a different motive. Color coding has a motive of visually understanding what is happening on your timeline? What do I mean by that? Okay, let's approach this by, with an example. So you are given a documentary to edit where there are few experts sitting around answering the question asked by the interviewer. And that is it. The whole documentary is the talking head. And in between here and there, there are a few, few cutaways, B-rolls, that whenever they are talking about, say, 
a global warming you see you put on visual of uh, effects of global warming they are talking about industrial growth you put any a video of industrial growth and all that you get an idea so what do you do there are three experts one interviewer and b rolls so five different kinds of footage so each expert you give a color for example r g b red green blue so all the experts are given one color interviewer white color b rolls brown color okay now that we have given the colors when you have done editing you are in the process of editing you are making uh, sequences or shots or clips or whatever okay as you build the story okay you can visually see who is getting more weightage screen time is the timeline is looking more blue more green more red more white more brown what is it and as soon as say uh, your post supervisor comes on like i think you know like the expert 3 is getting less coverage you can easily look at the timeline at a glance in a second like that and you can uh, you know like answer him back him or her back whether what they are suggesting is true or not you said no the timeline looks pretty red as compared to green and blue like you know he is getting good coverage and if they are right you can say oh yeah actually you know what you are right uh, the expert 3 is not getting that much coverage uh, i'll see that he or she whatever gets more coverage b rolls maybe you are not uh, it is getting boring just one talking head continuously going on people are getting bored and the, and your client or your audience one of those you know like critics who just sent for um, send the video for a feedback said you know like um, i don't know something is wrong it's kind of like dragging it's boring then they cannot speak technical you need to decode what they are trying to say and you would be you might be wondering why it's boring and you suddenly see that okay it's just rgb 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 going on so like they just experts see blabbering about something and it's like meh what do you do you see how many brown color are there not many so you are not using enough b rolls so there is a room for enough cutaways and of b rolls you use enough b rolls or maybe every time the interviewer asks something the interviewer's voice is coming off screen i mean whenever interviewer's voice is coming you don't see the interview okay not seeing the interviewer might be good at times not always say he asked a question and they answered and that led to a follow up question that follow up question need not to have a Uh, you know like scene cut to the interviewer not cutting to the interviewer but staying on those experts can make the audience feel that okay there is something more that is coming and i need to put my eyes towards the expert and not to the interviewer and as the question ends and we move on to the next question for that we might cut to the interviewer and see an interviewer asking a new question from ground up that signifies okay this is a completely new topic new question whatever this new thing requires my attention from scratch from new okay or else you are working on a short film okay no talking heads short film normal short film you need color coding to categorize different type of footage say raw footage is a color coded in a certain manner uh mov mp4 footages are color coded in a separate manner or you have three cameras each camera has been color coded in a different manner vfx shots are color coded in a different manner so in the last point here it is written vfx composite title text supers can be color coded differently vfx shot we all know something that has to be sent elsewhere or you if you are doing the vfx you have to perform it maybe in the same software and a different software it is a very good practice to be able to identify the vfx shots or you know like a, 
a slightly divergent from your current workflow that has to be continued in a different panel in the same software and different software altogether it is very good practice to color code those clips separately composite again uh, needs to be composited like two shots has to be merged to make it one a uh, cleanup there's a wire or this or that or whatever titles say there are titles coming in lower third major big headings whatever text okay those needs to be color coded differently because those are not clips any software you are using when you are, you are using titles or clips or whatever you have to understand those parts of your timeline are not videos those are completely completely vector based uh, images or vector based animations or vector based uh, props they will react differently say to the filter or alert that you apply you don't want your text to suddenly look little bit yellow or blue or green no so to address that problem you need a separation of text from your videos to do that you use colors supers what are supers supers you might be thinking it's a new word supers it's, it's a stupid word but it's used nonetheless supers is something that comes from i guess engineering background so in civil engineering there are two things superstructure and substructure superstructures are something that you that you see above the ground like buildings one story two story 50 story building that are superstructures foundation uh, bore wells they are substructures below the ground level the supers are something that are put on top of your video say black bars okay a film grain or a preset or a logo or a you know like a running text or something those are supers okay stupid word get used to it it is used a lot keep it in your head okay so this is how you separate clips it will it will trust me it will give you its results when you have a good organization skill in and out on and off of your nle it will definitely help you and once it you are stuck in a like stupid problem and this kind of organization skills helps you get out of that problem in like this two things will happen trust me two things will happen you will get positive reinforcement about yourself as an artist it will give you a motivation to continue doing something that seems tedious at first but gives result in a long term thing second trust me in our industry you are not hired for your knowledge you are hired for two things first experience that is literally time how much time did you spend in the industry and second problem solving skills that is essentially experience that is essentially skills that is essentially everything problem solving skills like you got into a stupid problem that is that is because of somebody else say the producer the director or dop or whatever and it is you who discovered it it is your table your post production process and or, or the uh, or the point where it is discovered now it is your headache you have to solve it if a good uh, communication skill and a good organization skill and a, a, a surgical approach to it helps you solve it and you can solve it in say half the time they were they thought it would take or quarter or the tenth or, or in a split second trust me you will become more hireable after all that's our goal we we need to become more hireable efficiency or become good at being a good editor or being efficient editor doesn't mean anything if we are not hireable this kind of skill will help you get become hireable okay moving on types of edit okay so now we are getting into editing types of edit so before i go to types of edit i'll just quickly look at the comment section if you guys are asking some questions or if there is something that need to be fixed or something i'll just get a quick look at you guys um i always get stuck and didn't care about color grading but you really showed the importance of it in a very practical way thank you ashish i 
if someone has some questions to ask i i can take a 2 3 minutes break please ask your questions in the comment section and i can quickly address them there is absolutely uh, i would absolutely love to know how you are you know like getting this uh, webinar and will you are you able to absorb it are you able to understand it should that talk slow or whatever no okay moving on then types of edit yeah so for types of edit i'll just first tell you about it and then show you okay types of edit would be trim edit literally trimming the start or and trimming the end you want only the middle part of the act okay so there are two clips if you trim the first one from the end and the second one from the starting there is a gap in between that gap is left if you do a normal trim you will have that gap ripple trim is the same thing but if you trim it the first one from the end and the second one from the beginning then there will not be any gap in the middle the gap will automatically close itself no matter how much you trim that is what a ripple trim is slip and slide this is an extremely useful extremely extremely efficient way of editing you especially in things where timing or slot is important music video you have made cuts to say 10 clips as per the beat every time a beat goes you have cut okay now it is looking a nice but suddenly the director comes and looking no i want this this shot to be changed with that shot and this shot to be changed with the other one shot now what you do you just go and delete that and go to that recommended shot process in and out time bring it to the timeline one track over and then trim it and then put it inside bullshit no or even if they say i want the same shot and but i want it later as in this is the length of the shot you have taken this patch of the shot the director asked you to put this patch of the shot what do you do you just edit it out i mean delete it out again open it in your source viewer in and out bring it down put it inside trim it a little bit more and then add it do you do that if you do that please don't no 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 this is not the way to do it you stay on that clip bring your mouse in the center of that clip like here press the key that activates your slip and slide tool okay in resolve it is t in premiere it is y and what slip and slide would help you do and also i like to clear things out slip is one function slide is another function it is not slip and slide slip is a function slide is a different function but why it is together but most of the time slip and slide two different functions they are clubbed together using the same key in premiere y uh, initiates or activates slip function but holding down i think control and control in pc and command in mac makes it turns it into slide tool resolve resolve is much smarter okay you press t you have both the functions slip and slide available to you without any modifier key only it only decides where you are putting your cursor i'll show you in few minutes okay so slip means the in and out point stays the same you are just slipping the footage inside the in and out point so you have you have a one minute clip and you have cut out a 10 second video out of it if you slip you are just slipping the whole footage within that range that you have selected now you can decide which 10 second of that one minute you want the beginning the middle the end the intermediate whatever you don't have to worry about things not fitting in the same place the gap is the same you are just choosing what part of the footage you want there that is it pretty cool right it is trust me if you understand how to apply slip tool effectively in your workflow 
you will be flying through your edit legit flying just remember it flying <laughs> yeah slide two slide is just different just 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 a tiny bit different than slip the best way to understand slide slip and slide is slip is micro slide is macro that's it slip you have the in and out point you're sliding the footage within the in and out point now slide in and out point stays the same the video inside the in and out point stays the same you are sliding the whole thing across the timeline so you have two footages here three footages here and you want this to just move a little here okay just slide it here you use the slide tool so as you slide your fixed that same in and out pointed clip across the timeline okay everything stays the same nothing moves except your clip so as you move it you will see your whole thing is moving but then even if you have done a slight bit of editing you would ask me well that is done because i can do that without using any extra modifier key just by clicking left clicking that clip holding it and just sliding it across it will automatically do that well that is not sliding that is overwriting if you leave if you do that slide it across say three clips and leave it first from where you took off the clip okay from in its initial position where you have moved it there will be a gap in where it used to be there will be gap in the initial position of your moved clip okay there will be gap there you have left a gap there second wherever you place it whichever time slot you have placed it whatever was there previously it is deleted it is overwritten by this clip okay so now you have two problems when there is a gap in the timeline and whatever was there earlier it has been overwritten that does not exist anymore slide is not like that if you slide you will not have a gap in your timeline it is overwriting in nature but overwriting in terms of time stamps what used to be in at 30 second mark is now at 20 second mark or 31 second mark but whatever information was there the information is still there it is overwriting in terms of timestamp not in terms of information you don't get any deleted clips your the maximum thing that can happen if you uh, uh, there is a bigger clip and you slide a smaller clip and you drop it in the middle of it that the bigger clip is split into two but nothing is deleted you don't lose any part of information because of which we can say that when the number of clips and their in and out points are constant in a timeline and you move any sort of clip the information is conserved um, it's a you know like kind of a science background divergent okay like nothing is created nothing is destroyed the so slip you move slide is a completely non-destructive way of moving your footage around if you just drag it overwrite it it's a destructive way okay yeah Ashish, yes, you are absolutely right. Right click, ripple delete, no. In Premiere, if you just hit, I guess, backspace or delete, it just deletes it. But if you hit control and then delete function, it will ripple delete it. Simple as that. So you want less mouse clicks, more keyboard. This is how you become faster. More keyboard. Come on. As much as you think the mouse is good like oh it is right there oh it is there just click no make it a habit control yourself restrict yourself whatever you want to do think Google search read the documentation read the keyboard shortcuts memorize them from now on make sure that whatever you want to do 
on edit in your timeline you do it with keyboard the only thing that we don't have a panel a editing panel with us the only thing you're gonna do with your mouse is navigation what navigation timeline navigation moving across horizontally and vertically that's it that's the only thing you're allowed to do rest everything should be done except for one more thing one more thing that is um, the playhead obviously if you are a very big timeline you want to jump to the something use the mouse to just go to that point in time use the mouse to shift the playhead yeah so three things vertical scroll horizontal scroll moving the playhead everything else should be done with keyboard shortcuts it will be really tough and irritating at first but after you do it you are going to be a rock star of editing trust me sip and slide done swap clips what is it swap clips is slide on steroids as simple as that there is no rocket science into it swap clips is i have a clip here i have 17 clips here i want this clip to be second from last third from last what do you do you bring it up by one video track select everything move it here take it here put it down no don't do it waste of time you select the clip you want to move activate your modifier key left or right in your navigation arrow keys just put right 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 or if you want to go left 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 and it will just move it will not move one second five second it will move its uh, position by one clip whatever the uh, length of the next clip is it will move it to the end say this is the clip it is on the starting of this big clip if you give this command once it will move it to the end of this clip no matter if this clip is short or long or whatever so it jumps from clip to clip to clip okay as it jumps you get super fast way to swap clips super fast and you get there and you see the whole timeline is adapted accordingly so when you move this to that there is no blank space everything is just shifting accordingly this is also extremely good when you want to swap to adjacent clips next to each other like this that's it you want to do this and the director would just want to get his head around how it looks if it look here or there or here or there so every time he's like here and there you you do what you just put it up this 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 no don't do this activate the swap function and just left right left right he'll be blown like oh damn man editing with you is really nice it's really easy i can i can uh, see a lot of uh, functions i can see a lot of you know like permutations combinations of however why i want other editors they be like mm, you know what this can whatever you are trying to do i can do it it's going to take me 15 minutes so if you can go take a walk or something i'll make it ready for you you on the other hand knows all these shortcuts you can do it like this and he or she being in their creative flow and able to just quickly implement whatever trying whatever they are trying to see makes all the difference again you are becoming more hireable in their head that's our end goal become more hireable okay rolling edit okay rolling edit is something that is used always there is always a rolling edit you just don't see it as a rolling edit that's the biggest problem what's a rolling edit two clips this is the end of this clip this is the beginning of this clip you want to change this point of conjunction where they end in the timestamp they are ending say at exactly one minute you want this to happen at say 50 seconds or or say one minute 10 seconds what do you do if we have to go this side you trim this you extend this you have to go this side you trim this you extend this don't do this waste of time so many functions no just press the modifier key control and come or command for uh, um, premiere again resolve is smart it does it by itself if you point your pointer in between the clips it will activate rolling edit automatically so you activate your rolling edit okay so this being 
the start of second clip end of first clip you start doing rolling edit it literally grabs this clips and their end points end points and starting points and it moves it together so when you're rolling edit the previous clip is being shortened and the uh, the uh, first clip is being shortened the second clip is being extended if you rolling roll edit this way the first clip is been enlarged or it's been lengthened and the second clip has been shortened at the same time it is like control rolling edit leave done two seconds finished as simple as that cutting to the beat or you know like synchronizing to the music or just making the biggest advantage of rolling edit is the most important thing in editing that is something called that is j cut and l cut i will teach you about j cut and l cut in a different class j cut and l cut are extremely important this j cut and l cut is something that makes your edit looks professional one thing that changes everything j and l cut rolling edit is the simplest quickest fastest way to do it else you'd be just you know like going this 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 whatever waste of time moving on these are special edits okay special edits they are called extended edit and dynamic trim and before i tell you about this extended edit and dynamic trim are not something that is available in premiere why i don't know extended edit some version of extended edit is available in premiere but it does not work as simply as it's supposed to work dynamic trim no there is no dynamic trim in premiere dynamic trim is available in resolve only and if you can harness the power of dynamic trim um you know like that um, superhero flash runs very fast i think you'll be a faster editor than flash if you can harness the power of dynamic trim crazy fast little difficult to master but crazy crazy fast before i go into special edits i want to go one step up here okay and now i would like you to show these edits very quickly in uh, resolve and premiere okay in i'll just take 5 seconds to set it up in the meantime if anyone uh, has not understood or is a confusion or th there is anything about any of these five types of edit please let me know in the comment i will address it asap right now and uh, i will just set it up in the meantime hmm Yeah. yeah so let's move on to resolve okay so here i'll show you different edit types that we just talked about in the meantime just give me one second break i'll be just right back
या जंपिंग इन टू द रिजॉल्व ट्रिम ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ ट्रिम एडिट ओके आई क्लोज द मीडिया पुल यू डोंट नीड दैट राइट नाउ So if you do a trim edit, like I said, it's the simplest form of editing. This and this. When you do, this is a trim edit. Okay, and this leaves a gap here. Sometimes it might be useful to you. Some most of the time it is not useful because. Technically speaking, nobody wants a gap. If you, if you want, if you if you say, if you argue that I want to put something in there, then don't use this technique. Use an insert edit. Okay, what's an insert edit? It just I will teach you in the next slides. Okay, so this is how you trim. And the second one is dynamic trim. This is the most commonly used, or I commonly use it. So I want to. Trim this part, okay. This green facing end, and I want. I don't want a um, gap in here. So what I do? I have activated the trim, dynamic trim. This T, okay. This A and this T, and when I trim it now, see how it is falling like a train. It is literally falling. If you want to see an overall look of the timeline, this is the overall timeline. We're doing it. See, every damn thing is moving. Even if I switch it one up, two up, one up, one on top of each other, and there is a gap. Okay. If I dynamic trim it, my bad. Dynamic trim is not activated. Dynamic trim is not activated. See, every thing moves if you don't want everything to move say you don't want video 3 to move turn it off and you are here on edit see only v3 is not moving everything else is moving so say consequently we don't want a3 to move as well so we have turned a3 off everything else moves and everything on V3 and A3 stays the same. Same with V2, A2. They are not going to move. Only A1, V1 is going to move. C. Isn't this fast? The only thing that I must, must tell you is when doing edits like this, the only thing that you need is an approach. Approach to 4C. Okay. You don't have to play catch up with the edit. You should be four, five, six steps ahead in edit in your head. Trust me. If you start doing that, you have already half professional. Already. It is really, really difficult to do that. Trust me, it is super, super difficult. Get ahead of edit. Edit should not be ahead of you okay that's a word of advice moving on dynamic trim is done next is slip and slide yeah so say i just turn on the video preview okay so we have a clip here so let's play the clip so there is some sort of talking, chatting going on between these two women. Okay. And this is how they talk. If I turn on my source viewer and I turn it on, we move from this angle to this angle. So this said so this is a good angle. We want this because we can see him, his face, her face, her face. This is the, here we are not able to see so much of face. So obviously this is, is a better take, right? 
so what would we do we go like this we delete it and oh we have to then first come here right click okay find it in media pool there is alt f for that as well open it in here take this delete this take this in i for in o for out take this come here oh i don't fit here okay that's too bad and again you have to come here and do this did you see how much time did we take that is impossible no don't do that i'm gonna undo everything okay so we are here you don't have to open it in the source view or anything just your timeline viewer is enough go here select it t to activate again dynamic frame slip slide everything it's right here go here we see in here we see this footage that is the one footage before and in here lower left we see the one footage before lower right we see one footage after so that you get a good look of what it will come into and what it will go out to okay so see i'm just trimming i'm just trimming i'm trimming i can see face all that face face yeah almost here no yeah done see nothing just one tool i got everything done no delete no nothing okay now slide okay for sliding i am going to use a clip that is shorter for convenience there is no requirement for that just for convenience purpose i am doing it so this is slip like i told you okay this like now the the arrows are inside the bracket now the arrows are outside the bracket now that is slide now i'll just click and i am sliding okay see the only thing is you can only slide as much as you have the footage this is the clip in and out point done baked to it if you slip then you are slipping the footage on the clip this red mark is the clip you're slipping the footage behind the clip it's like a small hole from where you can see the in and out of the footage and the length is its runtime but if you slide you're sliding it across the whole strip of the footage that would take the length in the timeline if it was not trimmed this is slide okay so slip and slide next would be swap clips so for swap i would like to go to the big screen uh, full timeline view and i'm just going to hold on a second i have not set this new version of resolve so i'm going to quickly going to go to the menu yes see this is swapping if this is my second clip i want to make it second last 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is how you do it as simple as that like it is that fast now like just 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 look at it and you tell me if this is not fast if this is not efficient one way one comment one reason one statement put it in the comments right now if you can convince swapping clips 
is not a efficient way it is not faster you if you have a faster way if you have a faster tip trick or hack let me know right now because this is bloody fast if you have lot of clips you up you got the edit approved okay everything fits everything functions but they want the orientation or the order of the clip little bit changed a uh, little bit you know like back and forth okay you don't have to move anything to any different video level just that's it just swap back and forth it's done deal um ashish is saying this feature and the time it took to trim makes me want to learn resolve sliding footage is destructive wow good question sliding footage slip and slide kind of sliding footage is not destructive how i'll just show you if i use this footage as test footage and i slide it okay not slipping slip is macro sliding is slip is micro sliding is macro i am sliding this okay so for example i have this close up kind of footage on the right and a different kind of footage on the left if i slide it to here i still have this footage on the left that footage on the right and destructive no it is not destructive because if i slide back see the previous footage revealed its previous clip uh, previous frames and so does this i can do this all day long but the clip prior to it not the clip after it no clip on the timeline will lose any of its information to an extent that not even you have to go to your bin this bin find the clip see if i need to you know like edit this trim this you know like maybe there is a ripple edit i need to get back no everything is there i promise you if you are sliding a clip uh, let's choose a clip that has lot of handles uh know this so this clip is quite large so we'll just make it a smaller one okay small and we'll use the swap clips okay so now we are here now we'll slide it okay sliding it hold on slipping is non destructive you know but there is some problem that i am facing and i am unable to slide for some reason take this for example so i did slide it over that clip completely okay the only time it can be destructive can be if say there is this footage of the lady wearing a hat kind of close up mid shot if i'll zoom into the timeline here to help you see if you do something like this okay and just close the gap completely and if you're trying to slip back see because we have erased any evidence of that clip that it was prior to clip we just did a sliding edit so if you slide back you will not be able to recover the clip this is the only way where it will be destructive so let's see it once again i will trim it a little bit more here so we have a 604 clip 
on the left we have 599 clip number on the right and we are working on clip number 5605 okay I am gonna slide the clip 605 on to 604 it is gone completely now if I slide it back I don't know where it is because it is gone you see that is how it is destructive this is the only way it is destructive yes Ashish uh, swapping clips is really fast it's really really fast also there is one more thing you should observe closely when it comes to slip and slide I am slipping right now this are my slip handles this is my slip handle of the previous clip uh, the one on the left this is my slip handle of the clip on the right my slide handles are here so and my slip handles are here just see the UI difference the software is trying to tell you what you are doing just by visual appearance if it is showing this rectangular box in the preview footage preview area it is slipping but if it is showing those boxes in the name file name area you are sliding see sliding slipping up down rectangles okay visual changes pay attention to them editing is something that requires a lot of concentration lot of finesse so pay attention to every small feature small feedback your editing software is giving you okay it is crucial it might save you a lot of clicks a lot of time or maybe save you from a blunder okay let's hope that never happens yeah moving on trim is done ripple trim is done strip slide is done swap clip is done rolling edit okay my favorite this clip 605 this clips uh, sorry this clip 604 this clip 605 we want a rolling edit we want the clip to be to you know like end and start here rather than here so what we do we just come here see this coupling sign like a train coupling left and right in between something like that just click and see uh, both the ends light up in green so it says that we will be editing both the ends simultaneously and boom done else what do you you would have done you like like this and this or if someone would have said no 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 the other way around bring it here so you would have done this and then you would have done this what is this no so no you bring it here so if someone is like oh i was like here like no, no 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 i want it here okay fine here done boom fast isn't that fast that is really fast come on now we are over with that if um, anyone would like that I showcase the same things in Premiere as well they can let me know in the comment I'll just show them all those things in Premiere as well but I must tell you in just doing so premiere is crashing on me so welcome to the adobe community of memes premiere crashes you crashes on you exactly when you don't want it to crash yeah ashish is yes rolling edit is faster yes it is it is
anyone uh, wants to see the same thing in premiere please let me know or else we'll move along yeah no hmm okay then moving on special edits okay in special edit we go and we come here extended edit and dynamic trim okay well extended edit is a hybrid edit it combines dynamic trim and rolling edit in just one key stroke okay just one key stroke how i'll just show you so i have to move to resolve again So again, I will remind you, extended trim is available to Premiere in some form that I don't understand, I don't use it very much. Dynamic trim is not available in Premiere at all, period, whatsoever, no, not there. So moving to resolve now. Extended edit, quite fun. Actually, it is not completely extending then edit i would rather call it bringing the edit where you want it to be okay so if you have enough handles extra frames outside the in and out point you can quickly call a cut between two clips to where your playhead is it's quite fun actually all you need to do is either select the edit points this or that there is a keyboard function yeah v in here or else just a mouse click would do or else if you want you can but the thing is you can only summon or you can you can only activate the nearest edit point if you are further away from the edit point you will you will have to move the playhead to that close to that edit point and then summon it but yeah that defies the purpose so say we are here say halfway that's really very weird so just click and highlight the end points you want to edit and i just told you how the rolling edit works when this is rolling edit with the magic wand i'll just pray press e boom no 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 I'll just do it again. Okay. Just bring it here. Do here. Maybe we don't have enough clip. So, yeah, we have enough clip here. Boom. Boom. Is it not amazing? Tell me. We'll demonstrate it again here. So, as you can see, in this clip, we have enough playhead to uh, sorry and a frames to move it to the playhead so select here press e boom it is done like done shortcomings okay not exactly shortcomings things you should keep in mind i move the playhead here i don't have enough frames if i press e nothing happens click click nothing happens i'm pressing the e nothing happens you might think that function is broken no check how much handle you have if you have if you bring it here press e boom it is done 
if you bring it here press e boom can you believe it if you combine this with markers okay say you turn the audio off and there is a uh, video off and there is an audio track music okay and you are just playing it okay and you just keep on uh, adding markers to that music okay so you're like um, na, 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 na. okay so that's the beat you can just like move to markers move to markers move to markers move to markers and just e e e e editing is going to be so fast literally so fast that is one way to approach things i hope most of you got the idea of how extended edit works it's not literally extending anything just keep that in mind it is just calling a scene cut shortcut just a cut a damn simple cut to where your playhead is it is calling it there on the timestamp of your playhead if you have enough frames outside your in and out points again just activate it and press e did not happen why because we don't have enough frames so what we do to demonstrate this obviously we just trim it and then we come here and e it is here also as a matter of fact did you notice that whether i activate the dynamic trim or i just am i normal trim an extended edit since it is a coupled edit in the sense it comprises both the leaving clip and the coming clip it is always ripple in nature so if i bring it here i will be left with no empty spots on the timeline extended edit rolling edit these are, are ripple in nature these are coupled edits they they work on two clips combined the leaving clips and the coming clips are combined it's the reason okay moving on then yes resolve is attractive thank you it is it will be more attractive if you start using it trust me it will blow your brains off it is an extremely powerful piece of software moving on from dynamic trim to input functions now this is the meat of edit insert override replace fit to fill place on top append at the end ripple override trust me if you are watching this screen i will hold it i'll literally hold it for few seconds write it down write these points down because these are the things that's going to put bread and butter on your table on your stomach this is how you earn okay this is how you earn if you don't by heart these functions you will be a pretty messed up editor not like a bad editor a chaotic editor who doesn't know what function does what to their timeline you like oh why why did that move oh why it is not moving or oh, did i just overwrite something where is that clip i saw it few seconds ago don't be that guy please don't be that guy no i <laughs> yeah noted thanks so we'll start with insert override replace first three things insert override replace to show it i will go back to resolve i go back to resolve and i use mouse to show it to you you will have to translate this knowledge into keyboard shortcuts i will tell you the keyboard shortcuts as well but for understanding purpose i will show you how it works in with you know like the mouse interface and all that going from here and to there okay so for that we will 
move to resolve again Just a minute. Yeah, moving on to a resolve. Yeah, so you can see the resolve here. Okay, input functions starting with insert edits. Simple, like the word says insert. So there are two clips, say here, you don't have to highlight anything, no clips starting their endpoints or in uh, out points or in points just place your playhead correctly that's the only requirement that you have to place your playhead precisely where you want okay so now i'm gonna select a clip here this clip okay uh, i can select in and out points here like this in out or if i don't have an in and out point it will insert the whole clip so what i do just click drag it here and insert see it has inserted a clip i'll do it again with the bigger in and out point out here click drag insert see there goes our insert what if rather than being in the cut of two clips we place the playhead in between okay We take this, oh sorry, take this, insert, C. This is why I tell you, place your playhead precisely where you want. If you place your wrong head, it's going to split the previous clip into two. And in between, it will add the in and out point of the selected clip. You are inserted. So if you don't want your clip to be torn into half, then put your playhead correctly but if this is literally your intent that okay i want this clip and i want something to be inserted in between them and i will finesse these these handles with rolling edit see how when we function when we try to uh, work on a project how these things these concepts of rolling edit slip slide uh, ripple edit extended these are not separate concepts you should understand that these are not separate concepts these are a part of same system when brought together only then it functions seamlessly okay just like addition is not separate subtraction multiplication division these are not separate when they come together only then we have something called arithmetic only addition you cannot do anything not much only subtraction can't do much. When you have all these tools collectively with you, then you have arithmetic. And it is powerful. Such is editing. You need to bring these concepts together. And how you can bring these concepts together? Simply practice. There is no substitute to practice. Maybe one hour, but daily. Come up with something. Come up with a tool, come up with an idea, come up with an activity, what you can do, what you can do, do it, one hour, it's going to change your life.
literally even outside editing if you want to succeed in something one hour a day continuously for six months eight months one year puts you ahead of competition like you haven't known before moving on so insert edit okay i will undo it again this time with the keyboard shortcut in another point we have here just select the timeline this small red line means it is selected if we go here see the red line is gone red line is here if you go here the red line is here okay so select the timeline and say in here press f9 boom and in the middle of some clip press f9 boom and it is done fast really fast okay M moving on to overwrite overwrite is exactly what it is it will remove what was before and write new stuff so here we have this lady walking and we have a shot from her a uh, shot her from behind and here we have a uh, showpiece select overwrite it overwrote where it was again here over right that clip is gone it and you for a split second if you don't pay attention you would say well um this is also over right well no it is not over right i told you before we did an overwrite yes but that overwrite was in terms of time stamp not in terms of information this woman see this frame this frame after overwriting this frame this frame it is still there so i'll give an overview only then you will understand okay so you here i'll come i'll just remove the in and out point so that we are using the whole video for a demonstration purpose i will see where we are ending right now 50522 okay i will insert it here i am doing an insert edit now where do we end 521 the whole timeline is expanded to accommodate the insert edit i just made but if i make an overwrite edit okay overwrite is done see this 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 is the overwrite where do we end 505052 the timeline did not expand so here we are overwriting in terms of both information and time stamp but again it is not destructive it is only destructive if we erase that clip completely and there is there is no trace no handles of it left so see if there is this small handle it's not destructive we can again go back in this rolling edit and we do this but you get an idea okay how a overwrite edit functions on the clip or on the cut it is the same thing we go and overwrite it pushes everything not away it like it it puts the thing under it it is it goes under so whatever it was it was like removed it was folded to make space for the new one the end point of the timeline does not change and the overwrite is done by f10 just like that like one key it is done f9 you do it it pushes f10 you do it it overwrites it okay after overwrite we have replace this is a fun one okay so if we say we just ripple deleted something if you were wondering so we have this small clip again and this clip if you take it out and put it here maybe you know what we will just delete it 
will ripple edit it to make it a smaller one say that small will come out will bring this clip now you can see our replacement this clip is much longer than our original clip which is this one okay why i am showing you this just in a second we'll highlight this clip we'll take this clip and we'll go replace my bed replace we literally replaced it like this it is a kind of override yes it is but what it does is swap the clip as in um say for example we choose something that is much yeah something like this much much longer okay some so your director comes your dop comes whatever whoever is your senior comes give you an idea that you know like i don't like this shot get a different shot okay just just change it you don't go ahead you know like delete it find another clip in and out point like this as in and then there is out maybe you know like extend the you know something you don't know how big is this you're like oh damn this is so big okay so yeah so this is how you do it no don't do that i'm doing everything okay you just select the clip take it replace it it is replaced and why we are seeing a peculiar handle here i don't know but just for example sake let it let us just trim it and replace it there is something uh, it, it, this could be a glitch in the new update but essentially replace is something very simple the same clip no the same in and out point audio and video you replace it completely with another clip so say in you can yes you can definitely mark in and out for the incoming clip as well so you have an in, in and out point of this clip and this is your new clip of replacement you take it you replace it see maybe that's what we were missing it is completely replaced closer look at the timeline see we are at 609 initially it was 605 it is completely gone replaced like complete switch okay this in that out it's a very powerful tool when you are finalized edit and there is a lot of complex stuff layers and all that going on you want to just replace one thing and you don't want to move anything around it extremely surgical tool replace extremely extremely surgical again replace f11 that is it f11 in and out point done script selected f11 boom done also i'm going to tell you f9 f10 f11 these are first just resolve only functions second these are resolve default so if you are following this with me or you going to watch this video again later you can follow this up with your new fresh copy of resolve installed into the system and these functions these commands will work because these are resolves default f9 f10 f11 f12 when you get used to it get your own custom keys whatever makes you feel comfortable whatever is more reachable for you okay moving on fill uh, sorry fit to fill okay fit to fill is an interesting one it solves a situation with two problems the gap is small clip is long or the gap is large and the clip is small the latter one is a sort of disaster actually i'll tell you why the clip is small and 
no the, the gap is small and the clip is large it will only add the portion of the clip it is able to fit in that space if your in and out points or a clip is longer than it it will get rid of it but if your clip is small and your ga gap is large it will slow it down disaster yeah yeah it does come handy though at times when you have a gap and you want to desperately fill it with just one clip and you can afford to slow it down why not okay i'll just show you how it is done I'll just trim the clip so that we can make the space smaller um a to delete it i am just going to make a bigger out point so yeah i'll just show you and, uh, and then i'll talk about it fit to fill then here and you can see a icon here and this icon of clock speedometer kind of thing suggests there has been a time remapping okay as you can see it has been sped up to 97% i think i just uh, said previously whatever sentence i said i think i contradicted myself so i just corrected and said once again fit to fill will fill the gap with the designated clip any which way if the clip is longer and the gap is shorter it will speed it up just enough to fit it if the clip is small and the gap is longer it will slow it down just enough to fill it simple it is a kind of semi destructive because you have to go into the time remapping and correct the speed whether it is slow or fast so you have to use fit to fill sparingly and thoughtfully okay fit to fill done i uh, just read the comments quickly ha no worries ashish i am sure that you will get to know more uh, new and you know like fun editing methods that's going to reduce your headache and make it easier for you to get things done okay place on top it is the most simplest and straightforward one why place on top to get an option because that video does not belong to v1 v5 v3 whatever because it is designated to go to that track you are following a organization or a hierarchy anything if you don't want it to go on that particular track but a track higher than that place on top is the function and mind you this function has a weird limitation and it's in the name if say you have a video that is on v5 you want something to be placed on top not literally say something on v2 you cannot use this function because it always puts something above the targeted track say for example i have this and i take this thing and place it on top boom it puts you on v2 you say yeah so what so the thing is i don't have a v3 right now did not create it don't need it right now but if i again do the same thing press it on press it on top it creates a v3 yes it does create a v3 again we go down to edit place on top is f12 okay so i'll just show you a very weird thing blue ones are video green ones are audio so f12 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 i'm going ahead okay but if i don't want to go ahead and i'm like here f12 
on top of it f12 on top of it f12 again on top of it now say for example i am putting here which is on v2 see what happens f12 it is on eighth track i targeted it on v2 why it does not care where your targeted uh, clip is it care about what is the highest number of video track available on your track say for example i go here this is on v1 i press f12 it comes down here but if i select v2 which is here again it is doing here then why not here the thing is it did not put this thing on i targeted here on v3 because of one important thing that you might miss and it might mess up with your edit the ending okay the end or any part of the clip if it cannot be contained in a track that is targeted plus 1 it will go to the highest number then plus 1 see here how it is overlapping so if i target it say here and i want this clip to be again on top of here so you know this v3 clip would attack it it's not enough space it will go to v9 f12 but if i do the same thing here where there is space it can complete it can it can be accommodated easily f12 it is just here you see this is a crucial part that if you miss it is going to uh overwrite something or it's going to create a track that might be you know like above your screen and you might not see it say for example if i do this f12 and if i do this again and f12 and i am looking like this and like where are my tracks why i can't see them because you did not notice they are above and you might miss them so take place on top with caution it is something that you may find difficult to like grasp if not done purposefully keyword purposefully okay moving on append at the end this is good this is helpful this is fast when you are making your rough cut you're building up the timeline okay so since you're building up the timeline you want things to you know like you are just uh, you know like putting things in order like one after the other or one after the other or you are making a select tree you are just picking up things you don't want things in between or on top you just want them on the end so you select any damn clip with end point without an end point whatever okay and if you don't have to select anything if you just say append at the end it goes at the end nothing as straight forward as that source viewer we go to edit this is the append on the end shift f12 v commit shift f12 in the end that's it this is the most one of the most straight forward functions append at the end it takes whatever you have the whole clip in and out point whatever puts in the end the end forget about it it's it's gone it's at the last that's it quick very quick very powerful way to populate your timeline cut 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 you have placed 15 clips one after the other without any gap nothing just boom very fast for uh, picking up good takes okay moving on ripple over right i think most of you who could follow me through can now get a little grasp of what a uh, ripple override can be okay uh, uh, ripple override is simply here i come to here okay and i put an ripple override 
okay we have seen override this is an override with an insert function okay so we see we are at 0429 okay we do a ripple override and we are at 041 you'll be like what the hell happened here i'll tell you what the hell happened 0429 is where our original timeline is what we just did here is something like this okay i'll move to a closer look okay and say bring this up so we can see what is actually happening a shorter clip okay this is where we are we are going for a ripple override can you spot what just happened this is a replace function replace function override function and insert function combined what we just did that this is the clip we are replacing it completely by inserting a clip that is either longer than the original clip or shorter than the original clip. Nonetheless, the timeline, the number of clips in the timeline that comes after it will adjust accordingly without any destruction or without any overwriting of information. So if I replace this clip with a shorter clip, the whole timeline will collapse. If I enter a longer clip, the whole timeline will move ahead to accommodate it. I will show you once again. 602, 607, 606. I am replacing it 629. Ripple, replace. 629 here, 607, 606. Pressing X is a shortcut where you can mark a particular clip where your uh, playhead is. I press X. It just puts an in and out here. Duration is 13 seconds and 8 frames. Clear the in and out point. Go back here. Okay. You don't have to even select the clip. 13 seconds and 8 frames. 17 seconds and 24 frames. So we just replaced something that was smaller but the timeline adjusted itself accordingly. Isn't that cool? Isn't that fast? That is done properly whenever it is necessary whenever it is required if you do it it's gonna be extremely quick for you to replace shots because the timeline is moving dynamically itself it is adjusting you don't have to worry about anything just make sure these track selectors are all right these track selectors are just the way you want them you are selecting the tracks you want to move and you are switching off the tracks you don't want to move okay now Moving on to our next slide. Ha, <sighs> yeah. So our next slide is track targeting. Oh my. Okay, so I wanted uh, this uh, uh, web webinar to be around one hour one and a half hour and i am sure that uh, this thing has gone way too long so i'll just do one thing give you an overview okay track targeting building a perfect timeline that is coming straight out of hollywood how you can organize them complex selections how you can make selections based on color codes and actors and short types and whatnot Select drill, which is important, imperative for any editor to make a select drill before getting into the granular editing. Why select drill is better in Resolve than in Premiere? What is the difference between nested sequence and compound clip? Nested sequence is found in Premiere and compound clip in Resolve. Software that softwares do not make you an editor. Okay, it just tool. You have to choose the tool wisely. Okay. So I would end my uh, 
web see uh, my bad webinar at track targeting we will pick it up we will continue it again next week you can subscribe to my channel so that you can actually get the notifications and also if you want to get uh, in touch with me uh, to be notified and be you know like uh, told about different upcoming uh, free webinars and all those and I have an online store where you can uh, purchase different uh, small plugins that will help you in editing and creating few effects this and that so I'll just uh, drop a link in the, the description in the in the chat so that you can uh, fill up that link and after you fill up you will be able to uh, get uh, direct emails from me and whenever uh, there is anything uh, like say next week next week we are gonna continue where we left track targeting track targeting is extremely important because all these functions that I just told you insert override ripple everything if you don't target your tracks properly these functions will be of no use to you how do you have something on v1 v2 you want something to go on v1 again you want to replace it overwrite it doesn't matter you don't target it correctly it goes to v3 you're like why it is going to v3 i want it in v1 if you have to select it drag it down extend it do it all over then what's the point of having an override function a ripple function an insert function those functions are nothing if the activation system the activation system is a track targeting if it is not set up properly if it is not targeted properly your clip will go to a different track completely track targeting also gives you a very important very powerful very cool feature there's a clip you want just the audio if you target the track pop properly and you place an insert edit the video won't come only the audio will come and vice versa you want just the video say it's a b-roll you already have a talking sequence you want a b-roll okay say it's a music video you already have a video file below you don't want the scratch audio from the camera what you do you just uh, insert it and then delete the audio no you target the track audio tracks properly and when you in when you do a insert or a ripple overwrite or whatever function only the video comes the audio does not come how you do that how you do that you do that by simply doing proper track targeting we will target the track targeting in the next week so track targeting will be targeted next week uh, same thing Sunday uh, post lunch I will give you I will share the exact links with you and uh, yeah in the in the chat I will just uh, drop a small uh, Microsoft form which you can fill up so that I can get in touch with you and you can be updated and you can be notified of upcoming classes and if you be so kind enough to just
so I hope uh, this uh, live session was helpful to you you could uh, learn some things uh, maybe few things maybe a lot of things maybe you are an intermediate uh, editor advanced beginner whatever uh, I hope I could help you and teach you in any way possible and please we have a lot uh, of uh, things to cover uh, we have a lot in store uh, I'll uh, host a similar live session again next week so that uh, you can come and finish this course and this was just a you know like a very small uh, small small part of um, this uh, being an efficient editor and efficient editor is actually a very excerpt is it's a sort of an excerpt of a bigger package uh, that is called a crash course into post-production that I am going to run in a, a few weeks time and you can come and join me it's a paid course I will uh, I will drop uh, a link in upcoming webinars uh, so that you can uh, come and join and learn things in a very in-depth surgical and practical uh, knowledge based and example based manner so that there's like no jargons required no previous experience required you just have to like focus on just the practicality of it okay uh, this is nothing like film schools or youtube videos this is uh, coming from my projects and whatever i have worked on in past few years i'm going to show you real world experience and real world examples and it's going to help you uh, get a better understanding if you are trying or thinking whether to get into this industry as a professional as an artist or you are already in the industry it will help you manage your post-production work better it will help you up the post-production game uh, get new clients new jobs and also manage your time effectively because trust me I don't want you to work like 10 hours a day 12 hours a day on a project and lose your personal life altogether personal life work-life balance is extremely important go out meet people work out uh, go travel spend time with your families it is important so I am going to teach you things that is going to help you cut down on the uh, office hours but not cut down on the quality of the thing that you produce or the thing that you deliver okay and uh, I hope I see you guys again next week and maybe uh, if you like this you can share it with your uh, friends and colleagues who are interested and so that we can help this uh, community grow and this becomes a community of um, people who are like-minded who are interested in filmmaking post-production and uh, yeah please uh, uh, in the comments please let me know if it was helpful there is a poll and there is a pinned message uh, uh, a form Microsoft form that you can fill so that that will help me understand what kind of audience uh, are you what is your taste what is the requirement so that I can make better videos for you that suits you suits your uh, learning curve and uh, yeah I'll see you next Sunday have a good week and take care stay safe